Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. It looks like I have a little a little co-host here <laughs> with me. Well, I wanted to try and film this. Um, so I've had quite a few people ask me um, about my convert story to Islam. Um, Alhamdulillah, I converted to Islam uh, in November of 2011. And the journey started, yeah, <laughs> the journey started um, way before then. Um, I grew up in a Christian household. Um, I went to a Methodist church. Uh, my mother was very um, steeply involved. Oh, she's leaving. Okay. <laughs> my mother was um, very much deeply involved in the church. I apologize. I never know like where to look. So if I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. Um, so my mother was very involved in the church. I went to church at um, an early age, going to um, Christian camp every year. Um, I was on the junior usher board, um, always helping and volunteering, doing different things in the church. Um, and always had questions. Um, never really felt I had them answered, especially from a young age when you're in Sunday school. And I remember asking, I didn't understand, um, how God was man and Jesus was God on earth. Like I, it was something that I had a hard time understanding. And so what I was told was that, you know, you don't question God and you just got to have faith. So you're like, okay, you know, I won't question it and I'll just have faith. But then as time went on, as you get older, and it's always hard, of course, when you're turning into a teenager and, you know, that's a whole nother issue in and of itself of just growing and hormones and life and, you know, just trying to get on. Um, but there were a lot of questions that I had that would come up as the years went on and they never really got answered. And so I would go to church and... You know, I always felt it was a place that was special. I always felt like um, there was definitely the presence of God there, but it just didn't resonate with me in how to express myself as far as my relationship with God. Um, I kind of felt like you go to church and you feel good, but how do you carry that on in your everyday life? Um, and how do you apply it to your life? Those were the questions that I had. And it was just like, oh, you know, you got to have faith, got to have faith, you just got to have faith, which is great. Um, but it wasn't sustaining me. So even, even after like, you know, becoming an adult, you know, um, in my early twenties, I didn't really go, you know, if there were special occasions or something or something that my mother wanted me to go to in support of her or something that was going on, I would go. Um, she was always involved. I would help her in the different ministries. She would, um, she would cook for the younger kids on Sunday. Um, so I would help her go shopping with that. Um, whether it was just volunteering, just whatever it was. I, so I never steered too far. So I was always around. And quite honestly, I still am close to the people there. Wonderful people. That was my first introduction to God. And they've all been accepting of me as a Muslim. So it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, but back to myself, I kind of adapted the idea of... Well, you know, I'm a good person and I believe in God and I believe all these different roads lead to God. And so whatever you want to be, if you're Christian, if you're Buddhist, if you're Hindi, like whatever it is, God bless you. God bless me. And that was that. And I kind of kept it, <laughs> kind of kept it at that. Um, of course, I knew about Islam, especially living in African American community. You hear a lot about the nation of Islam. So certain, you know, certain words, alhamdulillah, or, you know, salam, salaikum, you know, different little things you heard, you were familiar with hearing them. So it wasn't foreign, but what was Islam? 
I wasn't, you know, I couldn't really sit down and tell you like what Islam was. So, um, you know, kind of drifting on, sailing on, um, tried different churches and it didn't really resonate with me. Nice to visit, but you know, it didn't really resonate. I was really into Buddhism there for a while. Um, <laughs> but the thing that scared me with that is, um, there was like some kind of women's conference or something. And, um, I haven't done it in a while, but I used to write poetry, write quite frequently. And, um, one of the ladies said, Oh, Rose, you know, could you like write a poem, um, for this woman's event? So I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. And I'm paraphrasing cause it's been a long time, but it was a line in there something along the lines of, you know, um, woman is like God's gift to the earth or the world or something like that. And the one lady that called herself my mentor, I didn't ask her to be, she just kind of took me under her wing. She said, well, you know, you can't really go mixing different religions in. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, you know, you said something about God in a line. And I'm like, y'all don't believe in God? Like, <laughs> I knew it was all about the self and enhancing and you know all of that but I left them alone after that I'm like okay if y'all ain't trying to believe in God then so <laughs> I knew there of course was um the almighty there was a God but I wasn't really actively doing anything to put him in my life daily you know what I mean it was kind of like Oh my goodness, I need to pray because something really bad is going to happen. Or, you know, if something good happened, you're like, oh, thank you, Lord. That's so great. But, you know, just on an everyday basis, what was I doing to praise him and show my gratitude towards him? Besides, you know, the occasional church service or like you said, if something bad was going on, then of course everyone's, you know, <laughs> on their knees and praying. But it shouldn't just be in times of hardship that we seek our Lord. It should be something every day that we do to show our gratitude and to keep that um, connection. And I didn't really know how to do that. Um... So, you know, time goes on, time goes on, and I'm all like, oh, love everybody, God loves everybody, whatever. And um, I would say maybe like around 32, 33 maybe, um, you know, it just really started hitting me hard, you know, your purpose in life and, you know, what do you believe in? And, um, I started researching even more different things, you know, like I said, I had my experiences with, with Buddhism. I started looking at different types of churches, different denominations. Um, I looked into Hinduism. I looked into the whole new age spiritualist, you know, type of things, um, just like really searching. No, like I said, I knew about Islam. Um, I had heard about the Nation of Islam. Did I think that was for me? Oh, uh, you know, I don't know. I didn't really know too much about it. Um, so I don't know. And I knew about Islam, but was afraid to understand it because you hear so many, you know, everything on the news or you hear things that you know, people would say, and, oh, don't, you know, don't do that. Their women are oppressed and, you know, just all these bad negative things. So I kind of stayed away from it. <clears throat> but this time I'm like, let me, let me just understand it. Let me just understand what is Islam. And I started researching. And so when I started researching, I picked it apart. I looked at what is Sunni Muslim? What is Shia? What is uh, Five Percenters, a Nation of Islam? Um, I studied the Moors, um, Sufism, um, 
just <laughs> just you name it i tried to understand exactly what is it and what are the principles of islam so as that is happening as time is going and i'm not studying under anyone i'm not really asking any questions i'm just you know just trying to learn and just trying to understand and see what it is and if it wasn't for me then hey you know i've learned something new something about another type of faith but not definitely not committed to anything so i had the pleasure of working um at the first radiology center i've worked at and i won't say your name you know who you are because i figure you're gonna be looking at this video and um, i met this wonderful lovely vibrant <clears throat> young muslima and she's so beautiful she was and still is so beautiful on the inside and the outside and you know getting to know her um you know she she wasn't oppressed she was working full time she volunteered and did so many things in the community um and through her and she introduced me to another dear sister, um, whom I'm still friends with both of them today. Alhamdulillah, I'm not just friends, they're my sisters, they're my sisters. Um, I met her and her life was full and she did poetry and she um, liked fashion and just both of these beautiful, beautiful women, you know, they're living their lives. They're not, anything that society would have you believe you know what a muslim woman should be you know we all have our issues in our lives and this and that but they they were living them you know they were living their lives and so um befriending the two of them alhamdulillah you know i was able to ask questions but the one beautiful thing that i'm so appreciative to them about is um you know, nothing was forced on me. They, you know, as I started asking questions and I was asking a lot of questions, no one was forcing anything on me. No one was saying, well, you know, you have to be Muslim or I can't be your friend if you're not Muslim or, you know, they both invited me into their homes, meeting their families, feeding me, <laughs> you know, just loving on me. And no one was asking me to convert or no one was throwing a Quran at my face or you know nothing like that where coming from the world of Christianity um I felt pressured a lot it was just like well you need to you know accept this and are you one of us and are you Christian and are you saved and it was just it was too much so coming from that and then being able to meet families these two wonderful women who were Muslim and just being kind and loving to me and not asking for anything in return, not wanting anything, but for me to be okay with them and to feel happy and comfortable. And what is it that, you know, you need me to do? Are you all right? And, um, My one friend, her father passed away. May Allah be pleased with him and grant him Jenna. Um, and so me and, and, and our other friend, I'm not saying their names, so I don't want to <laughs> just put them out like that. Uh, but we, you know, went over to the house, of course, and I was ready to pull up my sleeves. What do you need me to do? Do you need me to wash some dishes? Do you need me to take out the garbage? Do you like, you know, that's what you do, especially in times um, of loss, you know, you go and you support the family and you do whatever it is that you, you know, you need me to do. And so I go over and, you know, brought food and, um, here it is. It's their, their loss in their time of grieving. And they treated me like a princess. Rose, do you need anything? Do you want anything? Oh my goodness, here. Um, you want something to eat? And I'm sitting there and I have um, uh, Yemeni tea, which is the best tea in the world, and um, pastries, and I have food. And they're like, Rose, what do you want? Are you okay? And I'm like, no, 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 this is so wrong. I sh should be doing this for you. And they're like, no, 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 we're happy you're here. And 
it's just it's that kind of love it it's that example of islam that people need to understand and they need to see and i remember leaving there and i called my sister uh brenda and i said sissy oh my goodness i said this is this is what islam is about this is I, i've never felt so much love um being with them and again i was not muslim at the time um they knew i had questions i don't know if they even thought that i was thinking about becoming muslim um it just it was just such a uh, just such a beautiful experience every time i was with them every time alhamdulillah every time i'm with them now alhamdulillah so um unfortunately my mother um, became sick and she had cancer um, had it spread to the liver it was just it was a lot and um, at this time I hadn't converted yet um, and again my sisters were there for me during this time just being of service bringing food coming up visiting just being the wonderful sisters that they are and my mother uh, she loved them Oh, I'm not going to cry. <sighs> she loved them so much. After mom passed away, oh, may Allah be pleased with her and grant her Jenna. You know, it just made me really think, you know, about her life and, um, you know, how she was a God-fearing woman. And even when she worked, she used to work at um, the Chevy plant. Um, even when she couldn't go to church, you know, she made sure I was there. She would send me and my cousin and we would go and we were always involved and you know, she did her best um, to lead me to the path of God and may, you know, Allah bless her for that. Um, and, you know, in reflection of that, I became very you know, proud of, of the woman. I mean, of course I was proud, but just, you know, proud of the woman that she was. She was a God-fearing woman and um, had such deep faith and strong faith. And then I thought, wow, you know, at the end of the day, on the day of judgment, I hope, you know, Allah is pleased with her and what she did. And then I thought about me and I said, well, okay what you know what do you believe in what what will your answer be oh you know i think everything just leads to god and you know whatever you are you are like is is that gonna be my answer and you know my mother god rest her soul she was 38 when she had me and i was 38 when she passed on and I don't know, that just it just hit me. And you know, I'm like, you need to make a decision. What do you believe in? You know, are you just gonna go through life just adopting everything? You know, it's great to be tolerant of other people and to <clears throat> respect them for their decisions. That's that's great. I, I don't think harm or anything should come to anyone. But again, the question is what what do you believe in? What are you standing up for? So it really pushed me to make a decision. What do I, what do I stand for? What do I believe in? And so really diving in and looking at Islam, it made sense to me. It made sense to me. And 
I was able to take it and apply it to my life. If there is a question that you have in life, you're going to find the answers in Quran. If it's not in Quran, then you study the life and the <clears throat> teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Um, it really is a way of life. And so I remember um, I really was just kind of like right, like just right there. I hadn't made the jump. I hadn't made the leap of faith <laughs> to really say that I'm Muslim. And I remember um, there was um, a lecture at UB, the University of Buffalo. And um, again, my good friend um, told me about it. And um, I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to go. And it talked about um, Jesus, peace be upon him, his role in Islam. A lot of people don't think that he plays an important part, but alhamdulillah, he, he does. And so I was like, oh, okay, you know, I want to go. And I had been learning. So, you know, I felt like I knew some stuff. <laughs> so I decided to go. And for some reason, I just wanted to wear hijab. I just, and I had, um, you know, I had scarves, like regular scarves, but I had bought um, like the two piece, I call it the ninja. <laughs> you just kind of, it's real simple. You just have like the head piece and then you put the other piece over. And then I think I had like another scarf that I had placed around it. And so, um, I put it on and, um, I think I found like a long sweater to like kind of cover. I think I had pants on. It's like a long sweater. And so I go, I couldn't, oh my goodness. I couldn't find this place. It was dark. I'm like, calling and texting my friend and she's like trying to like tell me where to go so I finally find it and I go in and um I find her and I'm like hey and I remember she looked like oh my goodness what <laughs> she's wearing a hijab I know it must have shocked her but I don't know I just I just wanted to wear it and so um so we're there and it was, alhamdulillah, it was a really good lecture and um one thing I liked is that, you know, of course they wanted, you know, the Muslim students to come out and support, but they also wanted non-Muslims to come out because, you know, conversations need to happen, you know, um, so that people can learn and so that they can understand. Um, so, you know, they did the lecture and then, he, um, I'm not sure if he was any, I think he was an, an imam. I'm not sure if he's from Detroit. Allah, forgive me. Um, but he opened the floor and he said, you know, I want to open it. I want um, people who are non-Muslims or they don't know about the faith to ask first because, you know, I want the dialogue to go on and I want people to be able to ask questions. And people were so mean. They were so mean. It, You know, I could take a debate. I could take a debate. You don't agree with what I agree with and I don't agree with what you believe in but we can sit and we can talk but people were like you know like this and I don't know if they were coming to listen more so than coming to just tear down whatever these Muslims believed and oh, it made me so upset I was in, it it made me so upset um and I remember people in the audience saying, well, don't you guys believe in this and believe in that, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm saying like under my breath, no, that is not what Islam is. Because at this point, you know, I've studied a little bit of, you know, I feel like I know a little bit. And I'm like, no, that is not, that is such a misconception. No, that is not what Islam is about. And you know, alhamdulillah, when I left, I remember driving home and I'm like, why were they so mean? And I was so offended because I felt like they were offending me because now I had studied about Islam and I understood what it was and, and the beautiful faith that it is. And so I felt like offended because I felt like they were offending me. And then... So that happened, and then um, I found this movie that just, you know, you just happen to see it on TV, and then I ended up, I saw part of it, and then I searched it and recorded it, and I was able to see the whole thing. And it's called Muslim, M-O-O-Z-L-U-M, I believe. 
um, I'll try to link it down below. Um, very wonderful uh, movie. Um, Evan Ross, who is Diana Ross's son, played the lead. He did such a wonderful job. And it basically talked about or it showed um, his struggles to be a Muslim and what he went through. I will not give the movie away because it's really good and just to see it unfold. But his struggles and what is Islam and what he saw wasn't necessarily what the faith is, but how he had to fight to, you know to be a believer it's just a really good movie and um so that happened and then with looking at the movie and i remember waking up one day and it was a beautiful day it was nice and sunny beautiful fall day i love the fall and i remember sitting in my room and just thinking and i'm like rose will you believe you already believe so like what's stopping you like, what's stopping you? You know what I'm saying? Um, tomorrow's not promised. And all we have is like right here and right now. So, you know, what do you believe? And so I sat there and um, I had written the Shahada down before and I kept it on my nightstand. And I remember talking to my friend, telling her, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know if I want to take Shahada and she said you know it's 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 a big thing to do it it's nothing to play with you you know make sure this is what you want to do it's not something you just say just to say this is you know this is it and so I picked it up and I said it in Arabic I'm not even sure at the time <laughs> maybe it was it probably wasn't perfect but you know Allah knows what's in my heart and Allah knows my intentions and so I'm sitting in my room and I would say, I don't know, it was maybe like nine o'clock or something in the morning and the sun was coming through and it, it kind of, um, I don't know, like the clouds passed or the sun kind of went away a little bit. And so when I said it, the clouds moved. I don't know what happened, but there was like a bright light of sun that came into my room and I was just crying and I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I feel so happy. Like I couldn't, I don't know, I could not explain it. I could not explain it. And so then I just wanted to go out and I, I put my little ninja little hijab on again. And um, I, don't know, I just went for a drive. I just <laughs> was like in the car and I'm like happy and I'm driving. And I called both my friends. I don't know if I called or text them. I don't remember. Neither one of them answered. I knew one was at work and the other one probably might have been on her way in or I'm not sure. So I, I don't know if I text them or left a message. Um, but they both called me back. They both were like crying. They were just so happy. And they're like, Rose, we love you. And I'm like, I love you too. And I'm like, right, I'm happy. That was on a Saturday, and so the next day I went to the masjid and, um, you know, took my shahada in front of witnesses, and I have a CD that I still have to this day that I make copies and I give to people, and I have pamphlets um, that I have. My husband actually looked at some the other day. He's like, where'd you get this? I'm like, I got that when I took my shahada. <laughs> and um, I did get a Quran. I think... I have that somewhere around here as well. I might have given it to someone who was interested. Uh, I hope they use it. I think I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it was a it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing. Alhamdulillah, that was in November of 2011. So, uh, that was my um, convert revert story. Um, to answer some questions for people, no, I did not convert for my husband. I was already Muslim when I met my husband. No, I did not convert, revert because of my family, my father and my brothers. Um, my father, God rest his soul, was not Muslim and my brothers are not Muslim. Um, 
I have one half sister on my dad's side that is Muslim. Um, fortunately, I don't really get to talk to her too much. Um, but other than that, like no one in um, my family is Muslim. Um, you know, they've been supportive throughout the whole thing. You know, they're cute because when we have barbecues, they're like, we'll cook your food first before we put on, you know, the hot dogs and <laughs> different things. So Alhamdulillah, you know, they try. Alhamdulillah, they try. They really have. Um, my one cousin, she loves coming to like events with me. She's like, oh, I feel so good. I took my sister with me, one of my sisters, and she loves coming to events. And she's like, oh my goodness, everyone is so nice. This is so great. So yeah, Alhamdulillah. Um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. I'm still learning, um, you know, and it's, it's a process day by day. You never stop learning. There's some days that I feel like I do great. There's some days I feel like, uh, I didn't do my best, but Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I have found the path of Islam. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So guys, <laughs> that's my story. Um, if you guys have any questions, please, please um, leave a comment down below. If you are a new Muslim and you have questions, or if you're thinking about the faith, I definitely am not a scholar, but if you leave a message, um, underneath I will definitely respond back to you um, I'll also put my email in the description maybe it's things that maybe you might want to ask or <coughs> excuse me don't feel comfortable having your name attached to it um, I just want to put a challenge out there to um, all my Muslim sisters and brothers to just you know, be that shining bright. I had that for myself. So if you see someone new at the masjid, please befriend them. And, you know, let it go beyond just seeing them at the masjid or an occasional wave or high. You know, invite them to maybe get a cup of coffee or invite them to the next event. See if they need a ride. Check in on them. Because a lot of times people are excited when people take shahada. But then... Trust me, being in that position, you kind of say, oh, okay, now what? <laughs> Where do I go now? And there's so many things that you have to learn and try to understand. And it can be overwhelming. It really can be overwhelming. So if you can, just be that, that light. Be that helping hand, that friend, that friendly voice. Um, don't judge. You know, if homegirl comes to the masjid and she may not have one, you know, an abaya. You don't know what it took for her to walk through those doors and to get there. You know what I'm saying? Give her some scarves. Maybe find, we, I'm sure all of us have like an abaya that we can give up or, you know, maybe give a gift card or I've heard of people having, you know, parties for new Muslim sisters so that they will know the ladies in the community. And that's what it's there's going to be days that um, there's going to be days that we do good. There's going to be days that we need help and support. So let's be that helping hand. All right. Peace and love. I hope everyone is doing good. And um, inshallah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Mm -hmm.